back in August, I declared that RGT85 was wrong about GameCube prices, and in that video I provided my reasoning. We were in the middle of a video game price bubble, and I explained that prices were eventually going to come down, so it would be worth it to wait. Now it's December, so let's follow up to see how those GameCube prices are faring. Welcome to Retronomics, the YouTube series that evaluates price trends in video games. If you're new here and you like what you see, consider subscribing for future content. I've been talking about video game prices for a while on my channel, and back in July I stated that we were in a video game price bubble, mainly because we're in a pandemic. People are bored, and there's no new media, so people have to do something to pass the time. Then in August, RGT85 commented on GameCube prices and said this still being expensive going forward and I don't see it slowing down anytime soon if anything I could see these prices even getting higher so if you want to get in with GameCube collecting now is the sort of time to do it you know bite the bullet pay these prices for these games because I definitely foresee these games continually going up in price if you look at how they're trending right now there's really no end in sight for when GameCube games are going to sort of stagnate and go down in price and I took issue with that not necessarily because of the logic I mean if you look at pre previous console generation prices, it's pretty easy to make the assumption that he did. The prices of a console go down after the new ones come out, and then they stay down for a decade or so, and then when people who enjoyed that system get jobs and disposable income, they go back to buy the games that they had as a kid, thus increasing the prices of those games. But we're in a different time. Of course, prices of GameCube games are going up, but so is everything else. And quite honestly, it's a real bad idea to buy games solely on the off chance that they might be worth more in the future. And that's why I made the video. And now we're in December, which feels like a lifetime from that August video, and GameCube prices are actually starting to fall. But is it a good time to buy? Let's take a look. Paper Mario Thousand Year Door has increased $60 this year and sold at $137 at its peak in July, and now that price is a bit more reasonable at $90 as of the end of November after a drop of about $40. The price does appear to be leveling out as the price change was only 26 cents this last month. So it's probably safe to say that Thousand Year Door will remain around this price for the foreseeable future. So if you were on the fence about buying this game, now's the time to snag it, especially if you're going to get some Christmas money from Santa. F-Zero GX has also decreased, but not as much as Paper Mario. Dropping $10 since my last video, F-Zero GX is still higher than it was pre-pandemic, but it might have some more to go since the latest drop in value was $3.21, but that's half of the drop between September and October. Super Mario Sunshine is leveling off faster than the previous games that I mentioned with a $2.37 loss since July. The game didn't even rise in value that much to begin with, only climbing a maximum of $15 since March. The drop in price has slowed a bit and it's actually the cheapest it's been since December of last year at $46.43 and it might drop some more but I expect it to rise after Super Mario 3D All-Stars is discontinued at the end of March. I think the biggest draw to this price drop is the addition of GameCube controller support to the Switch version. Eternal Darkness is a game that's had its ups and downs since I made that video in August, and I think we've seen the peak in September at $80, but it's still not on its way down like previous games that I've mentioned. Given that it's only dropped in price twice in the past six months, I would say that we're going to see this game sit at $60 to $75 for the next couple of months. Time will tell if it'll drop below that, but it's an obscure title, and I would actually be purchasing this sooner rather than later if I didn't already have it. Metal Gear Solid Twin Snakes has peaked back in July at $92.10, but it's fluctuated a lot since then, and it mostly looks like it's leveling off in price and will probably remain between $70 and $80 for the foreseeable future. It might rise in price in the next couple of months, but it is looking like a higher priced game, especially since there are rumors that Metal Gear Solid will be remade from the ground up. Depending on how the gameplay is in the remake, Twin Snakes might be the definitive way to play Metal Gear Solid, and also the announcement of the movie might cause a spike as well. Skies of Arcadia has been dropping since I last posted my video, dropping a full $60 since its peak in August. 
Given its pace, I wouldn't be surprised if it drops below $100 in the next couple of months. Keep an eye on this game because you might get yourself a deal in the next couple of months before it springs back up. It hasn't been below $80 since the end of July of 2019 and probably won't get any lower than that, mainly because it's one of the only RPGs for the GameCube. Super Smash Bros. Melee really hasn't seen any significant changes in price, and in fact it's dropped a little bit to pre-pandemic prices, but the recent slippy debacle that has been happening seems to have sparked more interest among non-Smash players, but it probably won't increase too much since I was informed that people will just play the ISO of this game instead of buying their own copies. On to Chibi Robo and it looks like the meme magic is finally running out of this game because it's been steadily dropping over the past couple of months, with its biggest drop of $16.50 between October and November. Time will tell if this will drop in price more in the next couple of months, but it seems likely to get back down to around $120. Of course, I can't predict that far in the future, but the rate that the price is dropping, you might see it quietly drop below $120 in the next couple of months before it springs back up. But I don't think we'll see it go for its $180 peak anytime soon. Luigi's Mansion has been a good barometer of GameCube prices over the past couple of months, dropping a couple of dollars here and there. I don't really see this game jumping in price too much over the next couple of months, just like I mentioned in my previous video. So feel free to get your hands on this game if you feel the price is right. Twilight Princess has dropped $20 from its $90 peak in September, dropping $10 in October and another $10 in November. Will the trend continue? Perhaps, Twilight Princess on the GameCube is considered the definitive way to play as the HD version on the Wii added some creature comforts and the Wii version still has waggle, but even then I still think that we'll probably see a drop below $60 in the next couple of months. So there's a follow up on GameCube prices and as you can see prices are starting to come down but it's not really clear on whether or not these will drop to pre-pandemic levels, at least not given the current price trends. That could change at the start of the year as the unemployment benefits are set to expire and Congress seems to be dragging their feet, but if that does happen, I don't think that we'll see much of a dip. It's starting to look like people buying these games are people who haven't been impacted by the pandemic financially, so the prices might drop when a vaccine comes readily available, or they might increase if we get another stimulus before that vaccine comes out. So that wraps up this video, and I really hope to start making more Retronomic videos in the near future. I haven't made too many like the ones that I did in 2019, like the console predictions, because of the way that the pandemic was affecting retro video game prices. I'll probably make a follow-up to the video that I made in July about the retro bubble, so that I can get back on track. And if you have any suggestions on topics, leave them in the comments below. And if you like this video, please give it a like and share it with anyone who might find it interesting. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Snicktendo. And if you're new here, I have a bunch of other videos for you to enjoy, whether you like the Retronomics or if you're interested in video games in general. If you like what you see, consider subscribing for future content. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Super Nintendo, and I'll see you next time.